Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Hope that you're doing well. Today, I'm gonna to be ranking 15 super cheap fragrances from best to worst. Like my last video where I ranked fragrances, I'm gonna be using Tear Maker, and hopefully this time I'll remember to actually put a link to this in the description so you can do it too, because I think I forgot last time. Now when I say cheap fragrances, what do I mean? Well, for today's video, under $20 at discounters. Pretty much all of these you can find for 20 bucks or under. Maybe maybe like 21, I don't know, but right around $20. So let's jump into it, let's just check these out. Now this list, this tear maker, it's, uh, it's called Cheaper Than Balls Fragrances. These fragrances are cheaper than balls. What kind of balls? I don't know. Basketball, baseball, football. A lot of these are gonna be a little more old school because nowadays fragrances from the 80s apparently cost peanuts. You know, you can pick them up for nothing. But there are a few more modern ones sprinkled throughout. Let's kick things off with 3AM by Sean John. Now, the best part about this fragrance is the atomizer. The atomizer is sick. It's basically like a Christian Dior atomizer on a fragrance that costs $15. This one's really fresh. Uh, it's got kind of a gin feeling to it, effervescent. It doesn't have great performance, but the fragrance itself is nice. This one, I'm gonna put into B tier for, uh, uh, boom, not bad. 3 a.m. B tier. And I guess this is ranked on a, a little bit of a curve because these are so cheap, so I have to take that into account. So uh, a slight curve. Up uh, next, 4711. That one is the classic Eau de Cologne, smells a little bit like Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford, only doesn't cost Tom Ford prices, thank God. Well, obviously it wouldn't be on this list if it did. Really old school, that one's more of a refreshing kind of scent. You splash it in your hand and just throw it all over your face, smack yourself, you know, wake yourself up a little bit. That one I really like. Uh, Again, performance is, is terrible. It's not supposed to be good, but it, it's terrible. So that one gets dropped into B also. And I'm not gonna keep coming up with B words because that's it's it'll just take too long. Uh, next up, let's do CK1 Summer. Now this is the 2020 edition as far as the bottle here. They come out with one every single year and it hits discounters like that. You know, you find it at TJ Maxx, you find it online for next to nothing. Now, if you have a really old bottle of CK1 Summer, that stuff is expensive because people do collect these. But if you're talking the newer releases, yeah, they don't cost much at all. There's usually not a whole lot to write home about. They're easy to wear. They're clean. They're kind of boring, usually. Nine times out of 10. CK1 Summer goes into C tier for comes out every friggin' year. It isn't terrible, but C is kind of like just, you know, mediocre. You smell it and it's all right. So I think that's where it needs to go. Next up, Jovan Sex Appeal. Now this one is it's old school. So if you're a, an older gentleman, like let's say 50s and above, you might like it. I was gonna say probably, but you might like it. If you're younger, I, I don't think you're gonna enjoy it very much. Now it costs literally nothing. I think this one is about $10 and I'm sure you can get it for less than that. You know, I've reviewed this in the past and I appreciate it for what it is. I appreciate it. I don't want to wear it though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but D for don't wear this unless you're older. And I know that in my review, I wasn't really harsh on it. And like I said, I appreciate it. And I like the way it smells as a throwback kind of thing. But if we're talking about cheap fragrances that I want to buy to actually wear, Nah. Next up, <gasps> Dracar Noir. <laughs> now people are gonna slam me for this and say, Dracar Noir, ah, I hate that you like it so much. It's so overplayed. Yuppies in the 80s wore it. And people that wear it now have no taste, no class. Guess what? I guess I have no class then because this is not even going into S tier. I am adding a new tier above S tier and it is SS tier. So in SS tier, Dracar Noir. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. Next up, let's do Nautica 
Aqua Rush. Now I feel like Nautica really dropped the ball here because there's a flanker to this fragrance and it's called Nautica Aqua Rush Gold. Nautica Aqua Gold Rush. That's all, that's all you had to do, Gold Rush, get it? Like, boo, we gotta go get the gold, get the money. Call it Gold Rush, what are you doing? Anyway, this one is typical Nautica in the sense that it's inoffensive, it's got kind of an aquatic feel to it. I mean, obviously it's called Aqua Rush and it costs next to nothing. That one has a little bit of a um, Abercrombie & Fitch fierce feeling to it, a little bit of a fierce vibe. There are a bunch of fragrances out there that do have a fierce kind of vibe. That's one of them. It's, uh, you know, it's passable. The performance sucks, but we're gonna drop it into B tier because for the price. Next up, Set Sail St. Bart's from Tommy Bahama. This one is a classic go-to summertime fragrance, summertime cheapy, a little bit of a feel of Virgin Island water from Creed or by Creed in that fragrance. It has a tropical, kind of boozy feel to it. Very easy to wear. Performance, once again, socks. <laughs> a lot of these have that issue, actually. This one, though, I really enjoy the fragrance. I take that on vacation with me fairly often if I'm going to a beach or something like that because it's just perfectly suited for that situation. So that one, I'm gonna put in A tier. St. Bart's is it's really good. Uh, next, uh, Halston Z14. Z14, that's supposed to be a Z. This one at one point in time had Jeff Gordon as the face of the fragrance. Yeah, appealing to the heartland of America, NASCAR. At the same time, I think that um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was the face of, was it Dracar Noir? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think Dale Earnhardt even had, or Dale Earnhardt Jr. even had a Dracar Noir car at some point or something. Unless I'm imagining that, I don't know. Z14 has a similarity to Italian Cypress by Tom Ford. And uh, so that's the second time that we've got a Tom Ford private blend-ish kind of fragrance going on here that came out before the Tom Ford. This one has pretty good quality for the price. The bottle is fairly nondescript and the performance is once again, not amazing. I really like Z14 though. I know it has a throwback feel to it, but I dig it. I think it smells really nice. That one goes into A tier. Next up, Bora Bora from Liz Claiborne. Now, what's interesting about Bora Bora is, in my opinion, the presentation is terrible. It looks like it's a bottle from maybe the 80s that really wasn't put out with a big budget, we'll say, okay? It doesn't look nice, at least not to me. I know some people out there are fans of it, I really don't like it very much. But it actually came out in the early 2000s, I believe. So. It looks like it should be way older than it is. And it has some similarities to Curve. Only Curve is better, at least in my opinion. Some people are gonna disagree. But it's got a similar kind of feeling, especially as it dries down. It's got kind of a cheap, fruity, synthetic opening as well. Bora Bora of the popular-ish Liz Claiborne fragrances, probably my least favorite. That gets dropped into D for don't wear this. Did I already say that? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. How about D for dying man? Why do you waste money on that? Let's go from one cheapy to another. What am I saying? They're all cheapies. Let's go to uh, Gravity by Cody. Now this one, bit of a classic. And interestingly enough, I'm, I'm pretty sure with Gravity, you're gonna have some people who are just like, oh man, I wore Gravity hardcore. Got huge compliments. I love Gravity, Ugh. To some people, Gravity is to them as Curve or Adidas Move or Aqua de Jo is to other people. Like for a time, uh, a period of time in the 90s, Gravity was like, Phew. You wore gravity, you got the compliments. The people loved it. It's got a 90s feel to it for sure. So it's got a throwback kind of scent profile, a little bit leathery as well. Uh, now, let me preface this, this rating by saying, if you don't have nostalgia for gravity, probably not gonna care for it. But if you do, you're gonna care for it a lot. So that one, 
This is tough. This is tough. Okay. I, I kind of want to put it between B and A, but I'm going to drop it into B tier. For back in the 90s, this was sick. Still nice to have in the collection though. Next up, Giacomo Aura. This fragrance costs nothing. It's got a weird presentation to it. I'll go grab it. Hey, there it is. So it has this plexiglass, like this square of plexiglass on the front and the back. And then the fragrance is just a little suspended uh, matte finished green bottle on the inside. And the atomizer is just built into the top. Now, Aura is like a tale of both good and bad. It's kind of interesting. It's got this tobacco and tea kind of thing going on, but then it also has this very ultra super synthetic kind of sweetness that goes throughout it. Now, of course, you're talking a fragrance here that's about 10 bucks, $10, even less some places. So can't really expect a whole lot. Um, it's really hit or miss for some people. It's going to be very interesting, really cool. For other people, it is going to be a dumpster fire, just straight up garbage. I'm going to drop it into C because it has some interesting parts. It doesn't cost much at all, but it also has parts that people are going to vomit over. No, that's that's a bit too much. They won't vomit, but they will think that you smell like crap. C for crap. It's what you smell like. OK, canoe by Dana. Up next, this is an old school one. This one has a barbershoppy kind of feel, similar to Clubman, the old school Clubman. Yeah, that aftershave, it smells a bit like that. Got some vanilla going on in here as well. This one very much has an old school feeling to it. So it's going to appeal more to guys that like those barbershop type scents, those older gentlemen, uh, not at all expensive. So don't expect some ultra high quality bougie type stuff. Now I would probably put this into C tier but I'm gonna bump it up to B tier for bro, don't kill me, because the uh, mob hitman Richard Kuklinski said that he uh, used to cover up the smell of bodies as victims with canoe. That's great. <laughs> so if canoe can successfully cover up the smell of that, then, uh, Maybe you should get bumped up a spot here, which is what I've done. The Iceman. Yeah, you can search the Iceman documentary on YouTube if you want. Knock yourselves out. Next up, Mambo by Liz Claiborne. Now, this one has a, a little bit of a similarity with Bora Bora, which I, I dumped on, put in D. So where am I going to put Mambo? Pfft. S. S for scores, man. So, uh... With that one, Mambo is the fragrance of choice for Ronnie Mund from the Howard Stern show. That's that's honestly, that's the entire reason I'm going to put it in S. That's the only reason. If you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. It is more of a mature kind of fragrance, so it's for mature gentlemen or for guys that like to go to strip clubs, I guess. Davidoff Horizon next up. This fragrance is really not as bad as people say. Davidoff Horizon is a nice dry woodsy scent. It is again, maybe leaning more on the mature side. Younger guys probably won't like it as much, but the quality is not bad for the price and the bottle is good too. Performance, once again, not, not good. And that's a recurring theme here, it seems like, but overall the fragrance is not that bad. I'll put it in a B tier. For bad, eh, not really. And last up, Trainawee from Armoff. This fragrance is a clone of Green Irish Tweed uh, from Creed, of course. One of my favorite fragrances of all time. Trainawee, uh, some people actually prefer to the Creed. Yeah, my wife actually likes that one a lot. She thinks it smells good. It's got some sweetness in it in the opening that she really seems to gravitate toward. That one, you know, I would, I would almost start to put it into S tier just because it does give you that Green Irish Tweed vibe for so much less. But ultimately, it has to go into A tier. That way, S and double S can stay with just one respective fragrance. Is that a stupid reason? Yes, I think so. So there we go. Some extremely inexpensive fragrances. And I'll link each one of these below with their respective tiers in case you want to check them out. That's where I'm leaving it. I'm not going to convince myself to change this, although I know I could. All right, guys, 
That's going to do it for me. Don't try to argue with me about Drakkar Noir. That is definitely double S tier. That's where it deserves to be. As always, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there, and I will see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.